if you have everything available to you, but you don't know it and you don't know it intimately, you don't know what it means, then how can you take advantage of it? And so God is a God that wants to be known. And because he wants to be known, he wants to partner with us to help make him known. You know, and we can only make God known to the extent that we know him, right? And so this is this is so huge. And a lot of times uh, we make evangelism about um, uh, this, the, these steps we have to go through really tracking with your sin blah, 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 and then avoiding eternal conscious torment. Right. And so, um, and, and, you know, having people start off from a place of condemnation, um, really sucks. As a matter of fact, people generally are starting from a place of condemnation. And so uh, when you when when we recognize how gorgeous God is, and that God is actually already forgiven sin, not based on our asking for forgiveness, but based on the fact that he's love and love keeps no records of wrongs and love came in the flesh as the son with father god in union holy spirit in him god was in christ reconciling the whole world while we were sinners okay all of that that's a that's a past thing god has forgiven sin has forgiven these false identities that we're tracking with that causes us to do sinful behavior and so the place where that happens is where we don't know him and when we don't know him rightly, we don't know who we are rightly, and we operate in ways of being that are sinful. So this is huge. This is about not just evangelizing pe people. This is about actually evangelizing your own heart. And that's not to say what I don't mean to say by that is the fact that, you know what, there are parts of you that are going to eternal conscious torment or something like that. It's about knowing God more uh, better but more rightly <laughs> um and so this place of knowing god is a place of intimacy and we're growing in that if we think we've nabbed it grabbed it whatever we are delusional because you know in all the places that we're growing in in truth that we're being led <clears throat> into all truth there's apparently untruth that we're tracking with and we need more leading. And this is all about the starting point of the person of Christ. God was in Christ reconciling the whole world that we were chosen before the foundation of the world to be joined with Christ um, uh, without spot or blemish before him in love. So let's talk about this. I it's, I've got such gorgeous scripture. Let's start off with uh, John 17. I'm going to start in verse 22. This is from the New American Standard. It says, the glory you have given me, I have also given them. So they may, may be one just as we are one. Okay, so this is God's agenda. <laughs> so, right, it's number one, he's bestowing glory, right? This is the, he's not in competition with glory. God is not in competition with anybody. <laughs> um, he's bestowing glory so we can be one. We can be one with one another and we can be as tight with Father God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit as the Father and Christ are one. I in them and you and me that they may be perfected in unity. What's this perfected in unity? Matured in our oneness, our oneness growing in the knowledge that we're one with God and that we can rest as sons and daughters, beloved and adored in the midst of our mess, in the midst of our sinful ways of being, all of that, but that we're perfect, we're adored, we're, we're growing and we're working out the salvation, right? Uh, so that the world may know that you sent me. Okay, so this is the first thing that the world needs to know. You know, when we're tracking with our unity with, with Father, Son, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, and our oneness with one another, guess what we're loving is Christ loves. And by this, the world will know that Christ was sent, that Father sent Christ. Um, that you, um, so that the world may know that you sent me. This is important. Why does the world need to know that Jesus was sent this particular thing. It's because the world needs to know that God uh, became flesh 
to pursue every fallen, ugly, hopeless, dark, despaired, um, uh, um, um, alienated, suffering, uh, fallen, defiled, pick a card, any card, portion of their lives that brings hell on earth, right? Um, and you love them. Oh my God, just as you love me. Oh my goodness. That's what people need to know that they're loved as much as Papa loves Jesus, right? You're loved as much as Papa. Yeah, I know you. I know you. Yes, I, yeah, I know. I, yes, I know. I know what happened to you. I don't know what happened to you, but I know stuff happened to you. And I know you've done stuff. And I know it's ugly. <clears throat> and I know. <clears throat> bad things have happened that shouldn't have happened and good things haven't happened that should have happened. But that changes nothing in terms of how adored you are. And then for everyone else, right? That they're adored. We're not, you're not issuing a proclamation of condemnation. Listen, you are sinful. You are separate. No, you are adored and you've already been chosen and united. Wake up to that fact and let God heal your life, your heart, your identity, all of that. Um, and verse 24, Father, I desire that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am, uh, so that they may see my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. Uh, let's keep going. Righteous Father, although the world has not known you, yet I have known you, and these have known that you sent me. Now, isn't it funny that he said these? He was talking about his disciples around the table, um, uh, you know, at that time, uh, that they may know that he've sent him, because the truth is they don't know him, but they need to get this, like, you know, wow, all these people in the world need to know that Jesus was sent for them, but his disciples know that he was sent. Now, now because they can know that he was sent, they can start to know him, right? And I have made your name known to them. Your name is like your identity, who you are, right? I've made your identity known to them, right? So that the love which you love me may be in them and I in them, right? It's all about love. It's all about intimacy. It's all about growing in the knowledge. And out of that place, wow, we can make God known. But until we get this, Let's settle down, forget our evangelism programs, convert, con, uh, 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 for, forget about trying to convince people how sinful they are. <clears throat> That's going to go over like a lead balloon because either number one, they're going to be um, um, so defensive and they're going to be justified in sinful ways of being that you're going to have an argument about sin. Okay, that's going to be really effective. And then, um, or if they already know that there's sinful ways of being and they're feeling condemned, um, then they're just going to feel more condemned. Yay. That sounds really effective. Okay, let's go to John 17, 20, uh, 23, 26 in the Passion Translation. Um, this is uh, Jesus in the Passion Translation asking, I ask not only for these disciples, but also for those who will one day believe in me through their message. That's you. So Jesus was asking on your behalf. French, don't you know? Isn't it great that he thought of you? Um, but also for those who will one day believe in me through their message, I pray for them all to be joined together as one. All of his disciples being joined together as one, as tight as even as you and I, Father, are joined together as one. Oh my God, this is heaven on earth. God drawing all things to himself. Like where the church can't even, you know, we're bickering over stupid things. We can't, we're so confused and we're guarding our turf and we're making it all about our programs and our egos and our agendas and our theology. And then we're beating each other up with the Bible and we've got issues, right? No wonder, like, I don't want to join that club, right? Um, I pray for them to become one with us that the world will recognize that you sent me. So this is us becoming one. This is us experience our union with God so that the world will recognize that he was sent. It starts off with this idea that, wow, how do I know God? I need to know that Jesus is Christ, that is God in the flesh, right? Um, for the very glory you've given me, I've given men, them so they will be joined together as one and experience the same unity we enjoy. Well, that is like 
joy unspeakable and full of glory, right? That's where the anointing on, on Aaron's uh, uh, beard was flowing down his robes, where there's harmony between the brethren. You live fully in me, and now I live fully in them. So we've already have fullness. We just need to wake up to it so that they will experience perfect unity and the world will be convinced you have sent me. Have you noticed a, um, a theme? <laughs> yes. For they will see that you love each one of them. Sorry, I had to spasm a little bit there. With the same passionate love that you have for me. Oh my goodness. The same love that Papa has for Jesus is the same love he has for you, is the same love that he has for every single one of his kids, whether they know it or not, whether they agree with it or not, whether they're giving him the flying finger or not, you know, whatever, okay? Father, I ask that you allow everyone that you've given to me to be with me where I am, then they will see my full glory. So this is you seeing Christ's full glory, being where he is. Now, let me just ask you a quick quick quiz. Where is Jesus? Well, I, I know he went to be with the father, uh, but you know what? His spirit is inside of you <laughs> and tracking with Christ in you. The hope of glory fulfills that hope, right? Then they will see my full glory, the very splendor you have placed upon me because you love me even before the beginning of time. Going down to verse 25, you are my righteous father. Uh, isn't that beautiful? He's like, this is his Abba. And it's righteous because it's right. Like there's nothing about God that's wrong, right? There's nothing about him that's not good, right? Uh, but the unbelieving world has not known you. Let me just ask you a quick quiz. Any parts in you, just, just honest, you don't have to like raise your hand, um, but like just to yourself, any parts of you that are unbelieving in, um, in how you know God. God, are you really good? God, are you really there? God, do you really care? God, do you really heal? God, do you, uh, do you, uh, have you really forgiven me? God, um, pick a card, any card, right? So this is for you too, and me, right? Um, you are my righteous father, but the unbelieving world has never known you in the perfect way I know you. So this is about us knowing God, in greater, greater per perfection. Perfection is, is completion, fullness, maturity. Um, and all of those who believe in me also know that you've sent me. Ding, da, ding, ding, starting point. I have revealed to them who you are, right? See, this is Christ revealing his father, right? Because we can only know the father through Christ because Christ is the express image of the father. And we've got all these funky things that have been passed down for us for millennia in, in, in every society that somehow has painted God as, as angry, a taskmaster, someone who needs to be um, appeased, someone who's wrathful and his wrath being um, a, a punishing portion rather than his wrath being for you, right? Okay, for everything in you, that's not of his kind, which is not of love. So he's going, you're too gorgeous to be left alone. All right, to leave you alone in a fallen way of being. Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, and I will continue to make you more, even more real to them so that, the, that they may experience the same endless love. Oh, this is experiencing. How many people have ever heard? I want to experience God's love. I want to experience God's love. I want to experience God's love more. So let's climb aboard um, that you have for me for your love will now live in them. Even as I live in them, this is Christ revealing his father. So we can, we can experience once again, how adored we are, how adored we are. That never grows old. What grows old is talking about it and not experiencing it um, or acting like we've got the cap on it because we, we ticked off the scriptures, but we're not experiencing it, right? What ugly place in you, what hurting place in you, what angry place in you, what alienated place in you, what dark place in you, what sinful way of being place in you needs to be loved back into wholeness. He's our source. As you remain in me in love, uh, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do no dang thing, right? 
Uh, so let's go to Ephesians 3. This is another gorgeous ah, thing. Let's go. So I, this is a passion translation. So I kneel humbly in awe before the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this is Paul speaking the church at Ephesus, the Messiah, the perfect father of every father and child in heaven and on earth. Quick question. <laughs> Who's left out in this scenario? Which, uh, which person on the planet, even if they're a Satanist or an atheist or a pick a card, any card, even a legalist, um, okay, who is not um, either in the category of father and child in heaven and on earth? See, the father is the father of all, of all. He's not the father of the ones that chose him, right? He's the father of all human beings right? If you were not created, okay, then you could fall outside that category. But last time I checked, you were created and you were created by God. God's your father. And so in the place where we haven't liked that, where we've seen the father as something yucky, right? We've gone off, gone off in our own way. We've been delusional. That doesn't change our parentage. You're not a child because you chose your parents. You're a child because you were born of your parents, you didn't choose to be born, uh, but you were born and you were born in love. Okay. Um, and I pray verse 16, that the, uh, that he would unveil within you the unlimited riches of his glory and favor, unlimited riches of his glory and favor. Apparently you've got it going on. And in all the places where you don't know it, that's where it needs to be unveiled. Hallelujah. This is Paul's uh, prayer until supernatural strength floods your innermost being by his divine might and explosive power, might, boom, and explosive power, that favor, that glory, that's unlimited. It's being unveiled. This is enlightening the eyes of our understanding. Then by constantly using your faith, the life of Christ will be released deep inside you. And the resting place of his love, the resting place. How many of you, oh my God, just need to rest, right? The resting place of his love will become the very source and root of your life. Then you will be empowered. Ding, da, ding, ding. Um, to discover what every holy one experiences. Let me just help you here. You are a holy one. Even if you're, um, you know why? Because you've been set aside for God. Let me just a quick ask you. Did you set yourself aside for God? Or did God set you aside for himself? That makes you holy. <laughs> right? Because God chose you. It's like, no, I'm not taking any chances. I'm not messing with any one of my kids. I'm choosing you. And you're chosen before the foundation of the world, before you could sign up, before you could agree, before you could do anything um, uh, brilliant, before you could say a prayer, before, no, you were chosen. And you weren't just chosen because he was kind of stuck with you because, okay, I made my kids. I guess I'm stuck with them. No, you were chosen in love. You were his favorite thing. And so are all his kids and all human beings are his kids. So you were chosen. Where am I? Uh, then you will be empowered to discover what every holy one experiences. You get down with your bad self and the great magnitude of the astonishing love of Christ in all its dimensions. This is a length, depth, breadth, and height, right? How deeply intimate and far reaching. Oh my God, this is knowing God and making him known. So how infinite is God? How infinite is love? Let's know him more, right? How, oh my goodness, this makes me so happy here. How enduring, like his love wears off when he becomes impatient. Last time I checked, uh, the first attribute of love was patience. Uh, how enduring, uh, you know, when you, when you're doing right, or when you're going back to the dog, to the vomit. Okay. Uh, when you rebel against him or when you like do something adorable, right. And inclusive it is it's included. You're included. It includes the entire human race. God doesn't love people because he's trying to like muster up the fruit of the spirit. <laughs> He loves people because he is love and he can't help it. It's a byproduct. It's a fruit, endless love beyond measurement that transcends our understanding. This means our minds can boggle. Well, let your little old mind boggle because you are adored. 
right where you're at, right in all the stinky places, right in all the ugly places, right in all the faithless places, right? When, when, when you're faithful, God's faithful. When you're faithless, God's faithful still because he cannot deny himself. It's all about him. And he chose you. And he's going, let me unveil myself. Let me show myself. Let me show you to you. You know, grace and peace is multiplied through the knowledge of God. Well, let me just tell you, ask you, what part of grace are you like, nah, I got it. I tagged it, right? I nabbed it. What part of peace um, are you uh, needing? Like, no, I'm good. I'm totally, no, this is multiplied through the knowledge of God. So let's grow in our knowledge. This is the thing. You know, I, I think sometimes people think heaven is going to be boring. No, it's the most intoxicating place in fullness manifested. Why? Because God is the most intoxicating person in the cosmos and love is limitless. There's always something new to discover. Ha, huh. yes. Uh, transcends our understanding. And I lost my place. Hold on just a second. This extravagant love pours into you until you are filled to overflowing with the fullness of God. Okay, so it's pouring. Now let's do more. Oh, fill to overflowing. Let's do more. Okay, so maybe you're leveled up at the top. Probably not, but you could be. Okay, let's just make it till you're overflowing. Let me say, when you're overflowing with this, you make God known by showing up. You make God known by just the look on your face. You make God known by looking into your eyes and people encountering a God that loved them and gave himself up for them right in the place of their greatest shame, their greatest alienation, their greatest depression, their greatest despair, pick a card, any card, right? Um, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you to accomplish this. Okay. Ding, 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 ding. So all of, all of, all of the, all of y'all that are like, I want to know, I want to feel God's love. Okay. So that's God's job to help you. <laughs> <laughs> this is not like, I got it. If people get so frustrated with themselves, it's like, this is really not on you. Turn your affection towards God so he can reveal himself to you. And then whatever he's revealed, linger there. Maybe it's a little thing and you're like, well, that's not much. No, linger with what you got and you'll get more, right? Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you to accomplish this. And it's interesting that he says his power to do it. Number one, his ability, his might, his dunamis. Some of us, honestly, we have so much crappy strongholds. They just need to be blown up, right? The same word for dunamis is a, is a word which is power in this uh, sense. Uh, I don't believe it's authority, but actually I didn't look it up, but I, I would bet money. Um, but that needs to explode our strongholds. Like where you're, strongholds have a let me think oh yeah stronghold it explodes we need our we need our we need, need our minds blown because we've got like stupid things that we have going on inside us right really stupid ways of seeing god stupid ways of seeing ourselves stupid ways of seeing each other we've got massive confusion that just all needs to be blown up all right never doubt his ability to do that he he this is not you this is on him I don't see you anywhere except for the object and the recipient will achieve intimately more than your greatest request. That just might make you happy. Um, your most unbelievable dream, right? And exceed your wildest imagination, right? He will outdo them all for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. He is constantly wooing your heart. Know me, know me, turn to me. Let me convict you of this. Let me show you this. When I say convict, it doesn't mean like, um, uh, convict doesn't mean you're a convict. It means, you know what? Let me convince you of my goodness and how much I adore you and how much you look just like me in your flavor and you look so much like me in your flavor. I can't leave you alone to looking less than who you are. And in the place where you're connecting with who you really are, your, your, your doing is going to come up in righteous, gorgeous ways because you're righteous and gorgeous. You little holy thing, you get down with your bad self. Right. And so as we're tracking with that, um, 
you're able to do that. And then you're able to fulfill the purposes, right? And you're able to lean in and rest in his love. And then you will make him known. One way or the other, you will make him known because you're knowing him. See, it's, there's, there's something we were created to know and be known. And you were created known before the foundation of the world. So God may be the one, just, just, just guessing here, may be the one to reveal you to you, right? I'm doing a study on the maleness and femaleness of God. I'm working actually on, on a book on it. And there's something about even in that construct of male and female and gender where knowing God is how we know ourselves and how that manifests in, in maleness and femaleness, ultimate identity, ultimate everything having to do with you. He's the one that knows it. Yeah, he's the one to reveal it to you. Anyway, I hope this has been a blessing. Share this with someone who needs it. I'm going to go pray for a little bit because I feel like um, I've, I've thrown a lot of scripture at you. Yay, it's good. But let me just pray. Oh, Papa, I just thank you that you made a race of children that you adore. And the one that's listening, the one that's watching is so adored. Oh my goodness, that you just can't get over them. You look at your child and you're like, yes, this is my beloved son in who I am so well pleased. Okay, that thing they're doing, I'm not pleased about that. That's bad for them. That hurts them. That hurts for other. I have wrath against that because it's not good for them. But my child, oh, my wrath and my passion is for them because I love them. And I love them so much. I'm not willing to leave them alone in these fallen ways of being that are less than the gorgeousness of who I've created them to be because I know them. And I want them to know me. I want them to know how much I love them. Father, I just thank you for releasing that knowledge. I thank you for Holy Spirit, Christ in us, the hope of glory, who is God, who is loving us, the hope of glory, that the glory that you gave us, uh, that you gave Jesus will be in us, that we will know you and be together as one, that we can see see you through eyes that are increasingly clearer to be to know and to be known to know you as love and then see christ in other people the hope of glory as created in your image and likeness in the image and likeness of love that they are loved that we can make you known that we can be famous for love, that we look at one another as believers and we just love one another. Yeah, that thing's stinky. That's horrible. We disagree, whatever, but we love one another. Oh, that we're not willing to violate love towards one another. And then we love the one that doesn't know you, which is every much your child as we're your child. They just don't know it. And Father, that we can make that knowledge known, make you know, which is life in abundance to the full till it overflows. Father, I just thank you that it's your job and that you're all the while at effectually at work in us, energizing, creating in us the power and desire to will and to work for your good pleasure, satisfaction, uh, and delight. And I thank you, Father, that you're pleasurable and delightful and satisfying. And in that place, we can make you known. Thank you for that, Papa. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you guys. Share this with someone else. Have a great day.